Ladies and gentlemen, the Neosme AC8N. No fan, no noise, pure silent computing bliss. But before we continue, Ezas Partition Master Professional is a comprehensive storage partitioning app for your PC or server. Resize and extend partitions, clone OS drives, convert MBR to GPT, and even recover lost or broken partitions. Find out more in the video description. As of this video, you can find the fanless Newsmay AC8N on Amazon.com for $209 US dollars pre-built after the discount. That nets you 8GB of DDR4 memory and a 256GB M.2 SATA SSD. Or you can get double the storage and memory for an extra $30 US, which is very reasonable. The Newsmay Mini is rocking the Intel N100, the latest 4-core entry-level CPU, but the faster N200 model is coming soon. Accessories include a HDMI cable and monitor mount. There's also screws and a wall power supply. The case is made of a rubbery plastic substance and is close to a 4x4 inch nuck in size. It looks pretty nice for a fanless PC. Cooling is handled by a heatsink with large fins on top of the board, which transfers the heat from the CPU onto the case and dissipates upwards and to the side. The port selection is interesting. If you're a fan of all USB ports on the front, here it is. Personally, I prefer a mix of front and rear action. You gotta mix it up from time to time, or it starts to become routine. What are we talking about again? Oh right, so 4 USB 3, 5 gigabit, a micro SD card reader, which is rare to see, and both a separate microphone and headphone jack. The back has a DisplayPort 1.2, which I wish more minis would include, as well as HDMI 2.0 and VGA, which I'd rather not see included. But might be useful to someone out there. Finally, we have dual gigabit LAN ports. Realtek Wi-Fi 6 with Bluetooth 5.2 is included. It's real easy to access the M.2 drive and memory on this mini. Just a couple of screws and lift the lid. Easy AF. Getting access to a CMOS battery and M.2 Wi-Fi card is more annoying. You'll need to remove the rubber feet and then the screws. The story of my life. Just a reminder, all the Intel Alder Lake N CPUs are single channel only, and we have one DDR4 stick at 2666 MHz, and an M.2 SATA drive. So right off the bat, there's two things for me to test. Does it boot fine with NVMe, and does faster 3200 MHz DDR4 make any difference? If the N95 is anything to go by, no, it won't. Windows 11 Pro is a poison of choice that's included, if you want to use Linux, Ubuntu booted off the USB without issue. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and LAN, all good. So you may be wondering, what can you use an Intel N100 Mini for? Well, it's good for browsing the web, as an office mini PC, basic photo and video editing, 4K video streaming, PF Sensebox, lower end esports gaming machine, retro gaming and emulation box up to PS2, GameCube, and Wii era, a home server, and digital signage. And since it's fanless, it's ready for 24-7 use, and it supports Wake on LAN, PXE, and Auto Power On. In 2022, I reviewed the previous generation Newsmay AC8 fanless mini featuring the Intel Pentium N6005. Overall, I thought it was decent, but it had thermal and performance issues. This time around, spoiler alert, things have improved. A lot. And segmentation wise, last year's unit would butt heads with the soon to be released N200, but it's interesting to compare it against the N100 anyway. By default, the power limits on the new AC8N are very conservative, 10 watts for PL1 and 20 watts for PL2. So being the rebel I am, I increased the limit to 30 watts in the BIOS, which can be done by going to Advanced, Power and Performance, CPU Power Management Control, View Configure Turbo Options. This gives a large boost, even if the Mini doesn't hit the 30 watt target. Alright, let's jump into the benchmarks. Before I go over the numbers, I'll quickly point out that the B-Link EQ12 is an actively cooled Mini with the same N100 CPU, and pretty much shows peak performance for an N100. I haven't come across a budget fanless that matches an actively cooled Mini just yet, so don't expect it here. The Intel NUC 11 Essential is the B-Link equivalent of the previous generation, so that's also a good comparison against last year's AC8 and this year's AC8N. At the default power rating, the AC8N has a single core score around the N6005s, which is unimpressive. 
but after bumping up the power limit, it gets close to what an N100 can do. A generational improvement of 27%, but still 6% behind the EQ12. Not bad at all. In multicore, by default, the N100 is power starved. It gets beaten by the previous generation AC8 by 27%. Luckily, with the power limit increase, the N100 model comes out ahead by 11%. However, that's still 20% behind the best performing N100. If you want to use this mini for video encoding, it does poorly without the BIOS tweak. A 25% drop over last gen, but with the power limit unleashed, it's 20% ahead gen on gen. And the actively cooled N100 is ahead by another 23%. Integrated graphics are unaffected by the power limits, so you get the same result. Anyone that follows this channel knows the N100 is basically a new generation Celeron, and while it kicks last gen Pentium's butt in CPU performance, for graphics, it's still behind, so no surprises here. The AC8N is 13% behind gen on gen and DX11, and almost 6% behind the actively cooled N100. In DX12, it's 22% behind gen on gen, and 5% behind the B-Link unit. Switching the RAM for 3200MHz had a slight improvement in DX11 and DX12. Under 2% for both, so I wouldn't bother switching it. Okay, with a power limit increase, the new ac 8 n has faster CPU performance of around 20%, and is behind in graphics by approximately 15%. Where it shines over its predecessor is in thermals. I didn't expect to see 75C as the max temp out of the box, but CPU speed does take a nosedive. Still, upping the power limit keeps the CPU below 90C, which is unlike the previous gen. So you might be thinking, well, the new one looks just like the previous gen, the cooling is the same, right? And you're probably correct. However, the N100 in this box uses much less power than the Pentium did, which means less heat, and we have a better thermal result, even with similar performance. Oh, and of course, with the power limit raised, the AC8N still doesn't draw as much power as the actively cooled minis, which explains the lower scores in the benchmarks. Idle power draw of 9 was higher than I expected, but in line with most of the other N100s. The included SATA SSD showed a temperature of 40C no matter what I did. Hmm, I don't know if that temp sensor is accurate. Anyway, speed-wise, it performs well for a SATA drive and shouldn't thermal throttle. I did throw in an NVMe SSD to make sure it would boot, and it does. Like most of the other N100 minis, it runs at Gen 3 X1 speed, which is a bit faster than SATA. As for fan noise, it doesn't have any, so the noise in the room is all you need to put up with. And with all that out of the way, it's time for the conclusion. The Newsmay AC8N is the first regular fanless N100 mini on the market. Thermal performance is good, both out of the box and with the power limit increased. It outperforms last year's unit in CPU metrics, however, graphics are slightly downgraded. And while the box runs cool, it's not very fast by default. I definitely recommend increasing the power limit in the BIOS to get closer to real N100 speed. It also only supports one storage drive. It looks like there could be enough space for a 2.5 inch in there, and I'm not talking about my wiener. <coughs> And unsurprisingly, it's not as fast as the actively cooled PCs. The port selection is also a mixed bag and depends on your needs. All that being said, I was happy with the Newsmay AC8N. Silent computing for the higher end processors is pricey, as the heatsink needs to be ginormous. But here, you have a fanless budget mini that works well. There's a slight hit to CPU and GPU performance, but you get to experience silent computing for a similar price to the actively cooled minis. And if fan noise bothers you, whatsoever, I think the trade-off is an easy one to make. Nice, it's the best fanless budget mini I've tested. But if you don't mind fan noise, why not check out my top 5 mini PCs under $250 US right now. Cheers!